hello, long time no see. Um, if you watched the video with my mum, the Q&A, then you'll know that I come from a family with a military history. I think it's 49 years actually. My grandma remarried, and my granddad, um, and I recently discovered that my granddad actually got a medal, but um, the sort of narrative goes that it was possibly stolen, um, he doesn't have it, um, so he's lost it. And I just wanted to redeem it for him, you know, when you've, you've done your job and you've been awarded for it and you've lost it out of no fault of your own, I just thought I've got to somehow redeem it. So my first port of call is uh, see what the sort of um, protocol is on getting medals back. What I'm going to do is probably make a video and I'm hoping that in the process I'll be able to sort of uh, log some information that I'm going to need to help me get this medal back to him. Okay, so I put into Google getting a new medal, MOD, and the first thing that comes up is um, like the government information page. It says apply for a veteran's badge or a medal. So I'm going to click onto there. Replace a badge or medal. You can get the first replacement veteran's badge for free. I don't need that, he automatically got one. They, they send you the badge through through the uh, through the post. So yeah. Anyway, we're we're focusing on medals. <laughs> you may be able to get a replacement medal. It depends how it was lost. You'll have to pay for a replacement medal plus a fee. You can only get a replacement medal from the MOD if it was stolen or destroyed. The information that I have at the moment, it was stolen. So we'll see where we go from here, but. For example, in a fire or flood, okay, so obviously destroyed in a fire or flood doesn't apply to me. The medal must have been awarded for service after World War One. yes. You'll need to show proof by providing a copy of either a police crime report or a successful insurance claim listing the individual items. Okay, you can also buy replacement medals from a licensed medal dealer. Okay. The search continues. <laughs> right, uh, I joined in 1953, uh, November 1953. Uh, I joined the Navy because I couldn't see much in civilian life. The work I was doing was a plater's apprentice that's working making boats, m metal boats. I didn't go there, so I joined, went to the recruiting office in Portsmouth, said I want to join the Navy, I answered a few questions and they said right you can join um, and I and told my mother even until I got back and said I'm joining the Navy. She did have to sign a paper to say you know she agreed with it but I joined and um, so I left you know Civilian Street to be a boy and uh, I joined for 12 years and that was basically it. Well, telegraphist, telegraphist is the word. Um, I joined that because my father was a communicator in telegraphist. And uh, in fact, he taught Louis Montbatten, Lord Louis Montbatten, uh, the Morse code and signals before he took over the Admiral of the fleet in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. So I joined to, to do that. And the idea was you went to HMS Ganges to do your training, which was roughly 18 months. And um, you have many exams right the way through the course and you must get a good percentage, and my average percentage looking through these records here, uh, was I passed with 80-90% on most things. And you just went on through that, you did your final exam at the end. If you passed all right, then you were sent to sea. First posting was HMS Bulwark, an aircraft carrier. Remembering when you go to sea, it's not like the army and all that, you go singly, you go by yourself. I had to travel from Ipswich to Portsmouth by myself with all my kit and to join this first ship. I got to Portsmouth Harbour 
and there was a Land Rover waiting for me, so the Navy were all organised just for one silly little boy sailor to join the ship. It took me into the dockyard and there was this great big aircraft carrier and I thought, oh, what am I doing, you know? The biggest conflict was the Suez Crisis, uh, which I was commandeered by uh, a Marines or commando unit whose telegraph has been taken ill and uh, so I had to go with them into Port Side or outside Port Side when they landed and uh, I had to do communications from them, the Marines, to the ship and remembering in them days there was no phones, there was no, you know, you relied on Morse or radio voice uh, talk. So, um, you know, that was the worst and that lasted only two days. Then they come back and they said, right, we're going back. Helicopter come in, picked us up and flew us back out to the ship. Mm -hmm. I got a medal for the Suez Crisis, which unfortunately I've lost. Uh, all it was was a general service medal for service in the during the crisis over there. I mean, the Suez crisis, which I didn't explain, the Suez crisis ended a bit of a flop, really. Yeah, we come back home. I always remember going into my local pub, and the you know my friends and I said, "Well, where you been, Mick?" I said, "Well, we've been on the Suez crisis all that fast." <laughs> so you know, it was one of those things. Okay, so I have done a little bit more research on finding the medal or um, it looks like I'm going to have to get basically a replacement medal. Um, so yeah, I've had a look at a few, I think I literally just put in um, to Google. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, MOD license medal dealers. Um, the government sort of page, information page, doesn't give you a list. It's up to you to take the initiative to find, you know, a legitimate company. So there are a few out there, but I particularly liked the look of Worc Worcestershire Middle Services. And they give you a, uh, a search engine and you just type in what you're looking for and... Um, Bob's your uncle. Um, the medal did actually arrive this morning, which is so exciting. Um, yeah, so I've opened it up. I just had this feeling like we should actually get the medal named. I don't really know why I didn't think about it when I ordered it, but I don't know, just seeing it like actually, you know, in front of me, I just feel like it's going to be worth so much more if it is named. I mean, at the moment, it's just any other medal. Um, but yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to... Um, you can order the sort of naming bit and then send the medal back. So I'm just going to pop on to the website now and do that. But yeah, and then we've decided that we will um, present the medal to him at Ganges, obviously where he did his his naval training, which isn't that far from where we are at the moment. So, um, I don't know, we'll sort of arrange to, to do that, but yeah. So I'm just getting the information that I need from my grandma, but yeah, you know, I'm just so excited. So yeah, I'm gonna drink this and uh, we'll see you on the other side.